Not one word is written of the thousands of workers who toiled in the heat, in the cold and in the rain, who cut through rock and blasted channels, who reared up great walls and buildings. Not one word of the lives lost of those who toiled with the crushed fingers of their calloused hands, dripping blood into the concrete or staining steel. It has been thus from the time millions of straining naked slaves built that magnificence which was, the, which was Babylon and those monuments which are known to us as the pyramids. The names of kings and warlords are handed down in manuscripts and in books to after generations. But few ever think of the great and humble army whose sweat and blood are mingled in the concrete and bricks as surely as if the walls were built over a framework of human flesh. They will remain unhonoured and unsung until workers write the histories that are taught in our schools. The most dangerous thing that's likely to happen to me in my job is I'll cut my finger on a piece of paper. And so the kinds of things that you do every day and that I saw happening down on the site yesterday down in Eagle Street, that combination of order and chaos that make up any big building site, and I suppose even small ones, are not part of the kind of daily life that, uh, that I have as a writer. We could put death plaques over almost every major building site and, and city block around Australia and list the names of the workers who have lost their lives in putting up the construction of Australian cities, dams, reservoirs, silos. Our builders, labourers, batteries about health and safety. So the whole book is about that. Scaffolding, hearing loss, asbestos, every aspect. Industrial romantics, and then the battles for compo, to get amenities on site. I hadn't been researching the book for a week when I realised there were two issues. This was the 1920s. I began to look at the material. Scaffolds and safety, and shit houses on sites. And I was talking to an organiser in South Australia that had been there, and he said, you know, I've been doing this job for 22 years. The first job I had was to go out and get amenities on site. What do you think I've been doing this morning? 22 years later, the same battle over and over to win them over. And that's what I've learned from talking to people like you, looking at those old records, and hearing from these people, like the old labourer, who came up with this phrase, a framework of flesh. I suppose the other thing I've learned from the outside, for me it's very much from the outside, is that of all the things that are necessary for safety on site, and you need a combination of them, as you know, you need good laws, you need inspections, you need all of those things. None of them works unless the blokes on site themselves and their unions are making sure that all those other protections are in place. And that's what the book's trying to put across to other generations, but also to explain to people outside the industry as to why the industry functions the way that it does, how dangerous it can be, how dangerous it is, and why what the government likes to call unlawfulness on site. They don't mean the ways in which the corporations cheat and steal. They don't mean any of that. What they mean is if you used to cut for yourself. And that's, that's the battle we've got today. How much worse would it have been had there not been a Builders Labourers Federation? How many more deaths would there have been had there not been a union? Always stopping the worst happening a way of slowing down the juggernaut, that, that the union's responsibility was for the whole of society, not just for what went on on site.